Bulbasaur is the combination of two of my favorite things. Dinosaurs and garlic. What's up guys? This is Jackie, your nerdy crafter, and for this week's tutorial, I haven't done resin in the longest time, so I wanted to show you guys how to make your very own miniature Bulbasaur resin environment. I absolutely love the cute little face on this guy. He's just so peaceful and sleeping. Of course, being the glow-in-the-dark fan that I am, the water does glow in the dark. This week's video is a collaboration with the Square to Spare. She is super talented, and for this week, she made a miniature TARDIS. Not only is the furniture that she makes amazing, but it's also pretty functional. So this TARDIS, yep, does open and it does light up. So make sure you check out her video and her channel. She has so many great videos and projects to keep you entertained for quite a while. It absolutely blows my mind how amazing her pieces are. Warning, this TARDIS may possibly not bring you anywhere through time and space. For those of you new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. There are plenty of geeky tutorials to keep you entertained. The full list of everything we're going to need will be in the description box below. And as usual, the clay I'm using is from Sculpey. For this time, I'm actually using a completely new resin from Sophie and Toffee. Wait till the end of the video for a full review. I will be testing it out in different ways. For the base, flatten a piece of brown clay. And flattening with your hand is not enough, so let's use a roller to get it flat. Cut off some pieces and then sketch where you want the river to go. Cut that piece out. And then you're going to flatten another piece of brown. My mistake is that I flattened it a little too thin, so later on I kind of broke it. So don't do the same mistake as I did. Use liquid Sculpey to put it right on top. For the grass, you're going to flatten a piece of green and place it on the base. Remove any excess. Oi! Come off you. Come off. There we go. Now cut off the part that we don't need for where the river goes. For the mushroom, we're going to roll the bottom part in a kind of drumstick. And then we're going to take the red and we're going to keep pinching the bottom and pushing the top to make a kind of hat looking piece. I would totally wear that in the summer. Once you have that piece, you're going to take the same color of the stem, place it right underneath, and this is the fun part. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love, I don't know, I, I think I'm weird, but I love touching that bottom part of mushrooms. It's so soft and stringy and weird, but yeah, try it, try it. You'll know what I mean. Now take your liquid Sculpey, and you're going to put the two pieces together. Before placing the mushrooms on the base, I pinched at the bottom so that there's kind of a suction once we place our liquid Sculpey inside the hole. I realized very quickly, once I made the two holes, that it looks like a face that's going, Hey guys, what's going on? Or kind of like Cookie Monster <laughs> without the cookies. Here it is from close. It looks super cute. And if you don't think it's cute enough from here, here it is from a different angle. And if you still don't think it's cute, well, there's nothing I can do for you. Time for little Bulbasaur. We're going to pinch two ears on each side of the head. And then with your thumb, you're going to push a little indent for the nose area. Pinch slightly in front of the mouth to create the beak. For the arms, you're going to roll two pieces flatten them very slightly, and then place it right under the head. For the body, make an oval and then pinch one part so that it kind of looks like a whistle. That part is going to wrap right around the head area. It fits perfectly. Now make the back legs and you're going to smooth it entirely to the rest of the body, more specifically closer to the butt. It's so cute! Now to make the bulb, just make a circle and pinch the top while twirling it, and then make indents with a tool. You don't have to place it right away, because the next part, do not panic. We're going to take our little Bulbasaur 
and place him right on the mushroom. Look, we didn't behead him, I promise. <laughs> You're just going to smooth that piece in. If the gap is too big, add a piece of clay and then continue smoothing it in until it's nice and seamless. The bulb was kind of in the way, so I did remove it and smooth it in and then re-put it back on. Now, if you have the patience of a god, even though I have no idea why people say that, because in a lot of mythology, gods are pretty impatient. Not calling anyone out, but Zeus, yeah, I'm calling you out. Go ahead and put some nails. Continuing on with Zeus type patience, make little swirls with a needle to make the grass texture. Now go ahead and add real rocks if you want with liquid Sculpey. Bake it for 25 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Once baked, you're going to take your tape and seal the ends. So this is where I got a little aggressive and broke the bottom part. On the next part, you're going to see that there's a lot of liquid Sculpey on the inside and see right there. So now what I'm doing is completely optional. I'm adding UV resin to the ends just in case I'm a little too worried that the resin is going to leak. You don't have to do this part, but I lack a lot of confidence sometimes on tape. Not that I've ever had it leak before, actually. That's, that's an honest thing. I'm not being sarcastic. <laughs> now you're going to mix the two-part resin. This two-part resin is two to one ratio. So one of them is going to take a smaller amount and the other one is going to be double that amount. And I'm going to be very honest, I was very aggressive with this resin because they said that there aren't that many bubbles. So I was really stirring it aggressively to see if I can create bubbles. And as you can see, they do come up, but then they pop very quickly. Add your glow-in-the-dark powder or whatever pigment that you want. Of course, you can make the water with polymer clay. And if you want to see that, check out my duck in a pot tutorial that I will leave in the description box below. Once your resin is poured, let it cure overnight. For those of you screaming that I've put too much resin and what do I do with the rest? Well, I pour them into cute little bear molds. Here's some smexy shots for you guys. Once cured, remove the tape. And the only thing that's left is to paint on the details that you want on the face. I'm using acrylic paints. Before I start reviewing the resin, I want to tell you guys about Scroller Box. Scroller Box. That is a monthly subscription box for art supplies. I am a complete noob, so getting a box like that really helps and encourages me to push and pretty much do the challenge of the month, which this month was New Beginnings. If you want to see the full video, it will be on my vlog channel, Nerdy Jackie, as well as the full unboxing of this specific box, also on my channel. All links will be in the description box below. This is not a sponsored video. This is purely for fun and for your viewing pleasure. All right, so for the review, I want to show you guys three different pieces kind of made in the same way-ish. So I want to start first with this one. Now, for this, the three at the bottom, by the way, are the Sophie and Toffee resin, and the three on top are the resin that I'm used to using, which is the Envirotex Light. So, we're gonna look at the Sophie and Toffee one first. Now, this is absolutely clear. What really got my attention is that the resin itself is super clear. The Envirotex Light has a bit of a yellow tone to it. But let's not kid ourselves. Here's when you put your hand in the back, you can see the micro bubbles there. Now, this is nothing special. Don't, don't start freaking out because microbubbles are normal when it comes to resin. So here's a piece that is from the Envirotex Light, and if you can see right behind it, here are the microbubbles again. You can see that the ones on the Sophie and Toffee are way more spread out, whereas the one here on this one, they're actually way more condensed. So there are a lot less microbubbles in this sense. Again, it's normal to have microbubbles in your resin. Just this one has a lot more. I also did a sticker integration. Now, this is so cute. I really love the Puffy Heart Mold. By the way, I got this online, but the shop is closed, so you guys can just search Puffy Heart Mold Silicon or Silicon Puffy Heart Mold and you'll find it. If you look really closely, you'll see that again there are micro bubbles, which is super normal. But it really doesn't show unless you guys are really looking for it. But because we're doing a comparison, both of them barely show. 
but this one was a lot friendlier because I was very, very aggressive <laughs> when it comes to actually stirring it. So if I were treating this one like I do with the Envirotex Light, so the Envirotex Light, what I do is I usually warm it up a little bit before pouring it. So if I were to do that with the Sophie and Toffee one, I'm pretty sure that there would be even less micro bubbles. And again, it's not a fair comparison because this one is much thicker, so of course it would have a little more. And this is another integration piece, and of course it does have micro bubbles. And this is the one that is not the Sophie and Toffee. So the Sophie and Toffee one is really good. They both have micro bubbles, but the ones in Sophie and Toffee have a lot less. For the Rilakkuma piece, this one was made with the Sophie Toffee. This one was made with the Envirotex Light. So there's barely any bubbles, just a little bit that I didn't pop. So I was like, I'm going to leave this and see what happens when I don't pop the bubbles. And this is what we had in the back. Whereas my Envirotex Light, as you can see, the bubbles are everywhere. So I let both of them sit and I'm like, I'm not going to pop any bubbles just to have an idea if they get rid of themselves. So we have a tiny, tiny concentration here and then here, boom, look at all that. So this gives you a bit of an idea. And then the edges also were very very bubbly so they didn't get rid of themselves whereas here the edges are pretty clean so my verdict is that i am really excited for the sophie and toffee resin i will be doing bigger projects aquariums just to kind of have an idea of how much work i have to do to minimize the amount of bubbles and i'll definitely be telling you guys more about it so if you guys are interested in that resin, I'll leave a link for that in the description box below. I am not affiliated. This is for your own pleasure because I know many of you say that you don't have resin where you live. So this is a way for you guys to have access to resin if you're looking for it. All done! Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to add me on all the social media stuff. Until then, I will see you guys next week.